Hello, this is Alan. Welcome to my Lesson 3 tutorial. Today we'll be looking at a, sim, a core that basically implements a Z80 CPU, some RAM. It uses the VRAM like the last demo. And there's a little C program that just draws lines with random colors into that video RAM, which then gets put out on the VGA and upscale to HDMI on Mr. Uh, we'll also, we'll just walk through that. I'm not going to really make modifications. And then we'll look at the Verilator template, taking Jimmy Stones' Verilator template, which is derived from work that Ash did. And Jimmy and I cleaned it up, made it run cross-platform on Mac, Linux, and on Windows. And we'll look at the Windows version of that. If there's interest, I can run through a Mac demo as well in another video. So looking at the GitHub page, um, when we get it to run, it should look like this. It should um, print this out. And then um, we'll run this simulation in a second. So the code here, if we look, there's a um, bootrom.c. And this code comes from the MIST project. And it's just some C code that writes to video memory by writing to a specific address. And then there's just a line drawing algorithm. And it sits here in a loop and draws line by line different colors. There's a make file. And to get this to run, you'd have to install a few of these tools, uh, SDCC and, and um, Z80. Oh, I guess that's a dissembler. I guess you don't need the dissembler. You need this source cap to turn into an Intel uh, binary or hex file. Anyway, I have the bootrom.hex here. And this is the file format that we'll need. Um, okay, so let's take a look in Cordis and let's walk through some of the different parts of the code. What I'm showing you right now is a little different than we've done things. This is a DPRAM module that is written in straight Verilog. And you'll see it has actually a display command here, which we'll see in the simulation. And it has this read memory hex file so that it can load the, um, the initialized, the ROM, the memory. Um, the reason that we do it in Verilog is so we can run it in Verilator. If we just use the wizard to generate the RAM and the ROM, like we've done before in Quartus, then we can't simulate it. And if we look at our SOC, we'll see where we call these. And right here, ROM, we pass in ROM.hex for our boot ROM. And for the RAM, we just leave it blank and we end up with a dual ported RAM. The top level, as always, is in this .sv. And this is a very simple, pretty much just hook up our clocks and our video signals. The If we look inside the SOC where we were, we have the VGA controller. We have a little logic to keep the CPU in reset. And then we have this Z80 CPU. And we hook up the different address lines so that we can read and write memory. And then right here, this is the CPU mux. So based on line 15, we decide whether we're going to look at the RAM or the ROM. So right here, if A15 is 0 or A15 is 1. And then here's our RAM and ROM. And so we can pass the same CPU address to both, but we need to mux back the data that's coming out of RAM or ROM. OK, let's take a look at what this looks like on Mr. So it basically just keeps drawing these different colored lines. If we want to run this in Verilator, let's take a quick look at Notepad. The first thing we need to do is make a test bench. And this test bench is very simple. The top are the signals passed in. And top, we'll see where that's used in a second in the Verilate command. Um, we're passing in signals for you know, red, green, blue. And then we need this horizontal and vertical blank, reset the clocks. And there are a couple of other signals. We're not really using this demo, but IO control. And if we wanted to load images and things, we can set up our framework to do that. And again, this 
is a very simple system on a chip with not much going on. So just pass the clocks and the video signals in, and that's all it's, this test bench is doing pretty much. On Windows, once we have the test bench and the Verilog code, uh, each time we change the Verilog code, we'll need to run this Verilate script. And this basically takes the Verilog, it'll actually lint it and give you errors and often better errors than we get out of Cordis and warnings. And so we run this and we tell it to, that the top module is named top. And as we saw in lesson three at TV, and then we put in all of the different things. And here we have to use the Verilog version of the, of the Z80 because we can't mix VHDL with Verilog, which can be a problem when we're trying to ver, um, simulate cores. If we take a look inside Ubuntu, what we're going to do is we're going to run this Verilate. Kind of head over for a sec. I'll just hit return. We're going to run this Verilate.sh script. And we have to have installed on our Ubuntu system on Windows, we have, we've had to install Verilator. And then it creates this object directory. And inside of it, you'll see there's a CPP file. That's the class that is our simulation. And this header is really useful. We'll take a look at that in a second. So let's pop over to Visual Studio. And let's take a look. So in Visual Studio, there's two important things that we're going to look at. Uh, first of all, sim main is the part of the framework that Jimmy and I created in Ash, that this is the top level. It uh, Jimmy went through and he actually removed a bunch of the code and put them in their own classes. And you can take a look through the classes if you'd like, but basically made a video class and input class for dealing with keyboard clocks uh, and other things. And then there's this memory editor is part of the MGUI, and that's really nice too. So we basically, when we come in to edit this, I changed this line here so that we'd have lesson three as a title instead of centipede as it is in the demo. Uh, these input handling, we're not using that here. I think this is set up for centipede as well. Uh, width and height of the screen, which this might not be correct. I have to look at that. And then here's our clock. We don't really have a clock megahertz per se, but we have a clock division. And so we end up with two clocks in this demo, 12 and 6, which is basically means that the pixel is half of the system clock. And then we hook top, and I'll show you where this comes from, but top and then any of the things that are in our top module, we can actually just reference like that. So here's clock sys, and we need to hook these up to the, to the clock so they go 0, 1, 0, 1 as we're looping through. And here's where we hook up the horizontal and, ver and the uh, vertical plank and the R, G, and B. So if you did have a core where at top you want to just R, G, and B without VJ underscore B, this is where you would change it. Um, I commented out this IO control upload and the D in because we don't have that in our top level. You could either add it, you can remove this stuff, whatever you want to do. And here's some mapping for the different um, if when this was sent to P, this is how we set up the keys. And this is how we would send some files through the IO control signals and queue it to happen in the beginning, but we should probably comment this out. This file doesn't actually exist. And that's about it for, oh, I should show you, this is how we um, set up the UI. And I added to this one the ROM, the RAM, and the VRAM editor, which is neat when we run it, you'll see. And we basically find in this vtop.h the right variable for the different memory things. And we say how big they are, and then it'll make a neat editor. And then I took some of the registers and I mapped them up. On the Windows version, this will work, but for some reason when I ran it on the Mac, I must have a different version of Verilator. I didn't get these 